Hello, my name is Andy from Oxford Computer Training. You're about to see an excerpt from one of our Azure AD Connect videos. So without further ado, I'll hand you over to our Azure AD Connect identity expert. I hope you enjoy it. Here's your agenda. There's a lot to do, so let's just get straight on with it. The out-of-the-box scenarios are designed to support uh, as many different scenarios as possible using the same set of rules. It very cleverly supports many multi-forest uh, scenarios as well, of course, as single forest scenario. The rule detail will vary depending on the configuration wizard choices. So depending on the choices you take in the wizard, the rules will be written differently and we'll look at some of those uh, ideas as we go through. The join rules are absolutely key to the success of these scenarios. When we say join rules, we're talking about the ones that are called join rules, but really they're the provision rules. They're the ones with link type equals provision. They do hold the join definitions as well. When you install and go through the wizard, you take some options about how users will be joined. And this is a fundamental decision about how user joining will be handled that's made at install time and ends up writing the rules out differently. On the right here, you see the dialogue that you go through, and we'll go through that in a bit more detail in a moment. Other object types can also join to the Metaverse person uh, object. It's important to realize that not only will a user from AD join to the Metaverse person, but so would a, could a contact or an INET org person. So let's look at those user join options in a little more detail. If we were to take the first one, users are represented only once across all directories. What we're saying is that all the forests are independent. The only reason for having a join rule is to mend things if they get broken, so for disaster recovery. A GUID is used, and the GUIDs are going to be different across the forests, and so there's never going to be any cross-forest joining. The result of that is that each user from each forest results in another Azure AD user. All the others have some kind of cross-forest uh, join capability. The first of them would be mail attribute. We'll have more to say about this later, but fundamentally we're saying that we're going to join by matching on email address. The next one, which has this rather long name, Object SID and Exchange Master Account, etc. Um, what that's uh, referring to is the account resource scenario. I'll give you a diagram about that in a moment. But in the account resource scenario, we're saying that there'll be an enabled account in one forest and a disabled account in another forest to support an exchange mailbox. The object SID will be available in both of those, and so we can use the object SID to join them. Completely reliable, uh, unique attribute. The next one is the one that we've used in our custom installation and we've typically been using in our demos. We chose SAM account name and mail nickname. So SAM account name to account name is normally used, but where exchange is detected, the wizard writes in an additional possible clause, an additional uh, join clause, which is that mail nickname matches the Metaverse account name. If the first one fails, the second one can uh, succeed, uh, potentially. And then the last one is where you know a specific attribute which is reliably unique, immutable preferably, uh, an AD attribute that can be used to match on something in the metaverse. A great example of this would be employee ID. If you have faithfully used a totally unique employee ID everywhere, there's no reason why that shouldn't be used. And there are certainly organizations that use employee ID. So those are your user join options. And depending on what you take, the rules will be written out differently. The default rules will be written out differently. Here's a pictorial representation of this user join scenario. We start off with an active user in Forest A. We've also got a group. In general, there'll be lots of users and groups, but we just need one as a demo. We also have a rule. Now, that is the rule that's going to provision a Metaverse object. It's going to have a link type of provision. But by convention, it's called the user join rule because it actually contains the all-important join rule. Because this is the first one that came along, the join rule doesn't do anything, and we provision a Metaverse object. And 
because of the other rules we've got in place on outbound, we end up with one in Azure AD. The group also gets provisioned into Azure AD and the membership flows through exactly as we want. In Forest D, I'm going to use Forest B and Forest C later on to, to uh, show you other things. In Forest D, we have an inactive user. That's imported and we have a rule in place that joins based on the wizard choice. Now, it could be that this is deemed to be the classic account resource scenario and it's using the object SID. It could be, as in our case, that it's using either the SAM account name or the email address, depending on what's going on. Whichever, it's able to join up because hopefully we've chosen the right option for our situation and the data is there to do it. The attributes are there to do it. We've also brought along with us another group. So group two is pointing to this inactive user and the membership for that flows through all the way to Azure AD. So our aim here is that in Azure AD, we'll have a single object representing a user who may have multiple representations across various forests. But the aim is to get to a single object and all the groups from all the forests need to be represented in Azure AD, possibly merged together as we've seen before, not in this case, and the memberships should be correctly showing uh, against that single representation in Azure AD. So this is our simple uh, join case and we'll develop this as we go along. On this slide, I'm just showing you what those two join rules might look like that we chose. SAM account name to account name is the default, but if it detects exchange, you get SAM account name to account name and you get mail nickname to account name as well. So it'll go through the those two clauses, uh, those, those two rules, one after the other. So it'll go through the first one uh, and if that fails, it'll go to the next one. Now I've mentioned that there are uh, other object types that might join to a person in the metaverse. It's not just users. The first one would be inetorg person. An inetorg person is almost entirely parallel to a user. It behaves very much like a user, but it's sometimes used in preference to a user. There's a whole set of rules that completely parallel the user set of rules. So everything that we say about users can be said about inetorg persons, and we really don't need to go into it in any more detail than that. Now, gal sync is a term that refers to the idea of there being a common gal, a common uh, global address list. So this means that there's a, a catalog, a gal catalog across your forests. That can have been built explicitly, but is often built using a sync solution like MIM. And it, it, what you do is you arrange that every user in every forest is represented as a contact in another forest and that broadly speaking, and, and the same goes for groups, but you end up with uh, email addresses being used as the common thing to link together contacts and users right across everywhere. In that circumstance, you're going to expect the mail attribute to be used. Um, a user in any forest could and probably will have a counterpart contact in another forest and the mail attribute will be used to join. In that circumstance, you'll have contacts joining using their mail address to persons in the metaverse. Uh, you, if the contact gets there first, it's possible that it projects, it provisions the, the person object. If the user gets there first, perhaps it will do, and the other one will join with the mail attribute. FSPs, Foreign Security Principles. If a user or group from a trusted forest is placed in a group, in, in, in the forest you're in, a simple foreign security principle object is automatically created to represent the user or group in the trusted forest. So that's something just just happens in Active Directory. What we want when we import a foreign security principle is that no new object is ever provisioned, but we do want it to join to the corresponding person or group that it matches to. And you can do that by using its CN, because the CN of a foreign security principle is the SID of the foreign security principle of the, of the object concerned. And because we have an object SID string in the metaverse, because there are rules that do that, there's a very simple way that we can join. We can join CN to the object SID string, 
and thus any groups that come along with the foreign security principle can correctly point to the user concerned and we'll show that diagrammatically in a moment. It's also possible to have combined scenarios. When there are combined scenarios, it's often referred to as a full mesh, mesh topology, a full mesh topology. Now, any time that you've got something more complicated than I've just described, where uh, scenarios are combined, the default rules may not be able to cope. They're very, very good, but they can't possibly be designed to cope with every conceivable situation. And once you start to move to a full mesh topology and combined scenarios, it is possible that they're going to work, that they're still going to work, but you may have to start to get involved. Let's look at some of these out of the box uh, scenarios then in a bit more detail. We've got our active user, uh, as before, in our first forest. It may also be that we've got contacts, quite independent contacts, sitting in any of the forests. So in forest B, we'll say that we've got an independent contact. And it's a member of a group, a distribution list, presumably. Now we can import that. We can uh, have a rule which provisions the metaverse object, actually both the, uh, the contact and the group. And they will flow through. And you'll see that's quite independent. And we've ended up with a contact object in Azure AD. This is a perfectly normal state of affairs. These are totally independent. We've got a user object uh, in, at each end or a contact, ob uh, a contact object at each end. But it's also possible that we'll have contacts that could be members of the same group which turn out to be able to join to a user. Because it turns out that when the attempt is made to project them or provision them into the metaverse, it first of all finds something to join to. So perhaps it joins like this to that existing user. Now we, what we want to happen is that that user becomes a member of that second group like this. So that by the time we look in Azure AD, we've got, I suppose you could say, the minimum number of objects to represent the objects we've got out in, in the various forests, but we've got the correct memberships in all cases. Now let's take a look at the idea of a foreign security principle. So perhaps what we've done is we've, we've got a group in Forest C, and we've gone and grabbed a user from a different forest entirely, actually our active user from Forest A, and we've put them in the group. And as a result, a foreign security principle has had to be created. That foreign security principle is imported. Now, there'll be a rule for handling this, but this is not a join rule. It's not, in other words, a rule that's capable of provisioning. It's an ordinary, and I know this sounds weird, join type rule. It's an ordinary rule. And it doesn't even flow any attributes. There's no need to flow attributes. That's not the point. The sole purpose of the foreign security principle rule, and we will take a look at this later, is to join on object SID to the appropriate uh, user. So let's just be quite clear. The way that this came into existence is because somebody in this forest went and grabbed this user from this other forest, presumably trusted, and put it into this group. That created the foreign security principle, putting the SID in as the CN, and that's all. So when we import it, all we get is the join. But importantly, this group will be imported as well, and its pointer, its membership, will come with it. So it can correctly have as a member this, this user. The active user now uh, that's represented in Azure AD by the orange uh, uh, blob is a member of group three. And the foreign security principle does, gets no further than achieving a join so that that membership can flow. And then finally, something that we've already done, we might have an inactive user with another group over here in our exchange forest, our resource forest. It comes in and the join happens based on our wizard choice. Let's be quite clear. This contact was only ever going to join on mail attribute. This foreign security principle was only ever going to join on object SID. This uh, uh, inactive user will join on the choice you've made. And we made the choice of some account name or mail attribute, but it could be something else. So the join hopefully takes place. And our user here now has got more and more things joined to it, a contact, a foreign security principle, an inactive user, 
all of these can bring along with them the groups from these various forests along with the memberships, these pointers, so that at the end of it, we've got the minimum amount of users created in Azure AD representing, represent, representing the same user that, that all of these different ones, uh, with the exception of our, our fixed contact, um, all of these different ones across different forests. But all of the memberships from all of the forests are intact. And we'll take a look at how these rules work um, a little later. So let's talk about how we go about controlling the provisioning action. And th this is something a little new. Uh, we've referred a little bit to some of these things, but let's be quite clear about it now. The first rule I want to give you is always provision to the metaverse. Now, always is a bit of a, a movable feast here because there are exceptions. With OUs and certain special accounts, we don't even bother putting them into the metaverse because we can never conceive of ever provisioning uh, an account based on them. However, for most users, uh, you'll find that the out-of-the-box rules do provision the metaverse and they set some of the below attributes, which we'll, we'll come to. And the suggestion is that you follow this pattern rather than preventing inbound provisioning from happening. What this allows for is connected by connect control, and I need to explain a little bit more about what that means. You have been watching an excerpt from one of 26 authoritative demonstration and explanation videos in our Azure AD Connect video series. If you'd like access to more free resources from us, want to find out more about these videos and the other courses that we offer, please visit our website. Thank you for watching.